In the set of integers, let P be the proposition, and then you've got this sort of structure in here, right? Um, you've got an if then statement, so that's pretty sort of normal, I and mean, you've got this first part, um, which what we like to call the antecedent, uh, you know, here's the condition, if k plus one is divisible by three, um, and then you've got this other part over here, which we call the consequent proposition, um, you know, what's the result if you meet that first condition, right? So we want to prove that this is true. How do we go about doing this? Um, it's kind of uh, fairly straightforward to say, well, let's just start with the antecedent proposition and then see if we can reason from that using arithmetic and algebra to get to our consequent proposition. If, can we start with A and then get to B? If we can call this, I suppose, you know, A implies B, uh, can we start with A and then arrive at B? through some fairly simple working, and I think we can. So, um, where I'm gonna begin, just like a normal divisibility thing, is to say that, you know, if k plus one is divisible by three, I can state that algebraically. I can say let k plus one be equal to some multiple of three. To be divisible by three and to be a multiple of three are um, synonymous in this context, right? So I'm gonna say, let's call that three n, where, both k and n are integers. Uh, they do say right at the beginning in the set of integers, so that's kind of just applied to everything. But I think it's important to actually say it in our proof because I'm going to have to appeal to this fact later on uh, to do some of my reasoning, okay? So I've made that statement, and this is the a part, right? k plus one is divisible by three, and I have to somehow get to the b part, which has a k cubed plus one. So in order to get from this k statement, I think I'm gonna to need to cube something, right? So therefore, I'm just gonna cube both sides and that'll give me this. K plus one all cubed equals three N all cubed. So you're gonna to need to be careful with expanding this uh, binomial expression over here on the left, but hopefully, I mean, you guys have got a head start on me. Hopefully you're getting something like this. K cubed plus three K squared plus three K plus one. Didn't quite give myself enough space there. And on the right hand side, I'm gonna get 27 n cubed. So again, I've just done some fairly simple um, manipulation of the, those two expressions. Now from here, like I've just expanded, great, but what was the point of that? Okay, and the answer is I want to try and find this, this expression here, k cubed plus one, which is part of the b half of the statement. Um, I want to show that that thing is divisible by three, so it also should be three times some stuff, right? And maybe you're starting to see, well, I can, I can poke out this k cubed plus one just without much effort, it's already there on the left hand side and I just need to kind of sift out, get rid of all of the other stuff, right? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. If I subtract everything else from both sides, except for the k cubed and the plus one, then I'm good to go, right? So you got 27n cubed over here, I'll take away the 3k squared and I'll also take away the 3k. So at this point, I'm like almost there, right? Um, you've got the 27, you've got the three, you've got the three. This is easy to factorize out, so I'm gonna do that. Everything in here, of course, I need to actually make the statement that everything in here has to be a whole number because if you, just cause you've got like three times something, that doesn't mean that you've got a multiple of three. I could say, you know, is five divisible by three? Cause that's equal to three times five thirds, but five thirds is not an integer, right? So that component, the other factor needs to be an integer. So I'm actually going to sort of draw out based on my um, earlier reasoning up here, the fact that that is true. I can say, but K and N, if they're integers, K and N, if they are integers, what that implies is that no matter how many times you add or subtract or multiply these, um, integers by whole numbers, you'll still stay in whole number land, right? You'll still stay an integer. So this, this statement here, that k and n are integers, implies that 9n cubed minus k squared minus k is also an integer, that whole expression, okay? So therefore I can say, therefore, k cubed plus one, that's gonna be three times some other integer, I'm just gonna call it m, like so. And at this point, like logic wise, I'm finished. I should just kind of tie this up in a neat bow. In other words, k cubed plus one is divisible by three. Okay, so I'll put a full stop on that and I feel happy about part one.
So I would love it if you can, I'm gonna keep on going, but I will come back to the chat in a second. Um, I, if you have a very different, a dramatically different solution to this, then um, please let me know. Um, I do see a question there about, uh, it's come through directly, so if you're looking at the chat thinking like, where'd this question come from? Um, it's about, are we allowed to use that vertical line, which you often see as like the brackets for absolute value? Um, it's actually called the pipe symbol, anyway. Um, are we allowed to use that, that symbol for divisibility? Um, if A is divisible by B, can we use this kind of notation? Uh, the short answer is yes you can but at your own risk. Um, this form of notation here you'll see in a lot of textbooks uh, mainly because I think the textbook authors are trying to like save space and they're typing it many dozens of times so they're like sick of writing it over and over again. Um, so it is a form of notation that is used. I don't tend to use it. I mean, you can see I didn't use it at all in my working. Um, main reason being, <laughs> you wouldn't believe the number of times someone does that sort of long symbol, but then they misread their own writing and they're like, I don't know, what is that? B-O-A? B-1-A? I don't know. Um, it's, it's sort of it sort of straddles that um, that world of notation that's used just infrequently enough that it's not obvious to everyone and the number of times people even in the AT4 misread their own working and then just carried on their working and carried forward an error, um, it's a bit embarrassing. Um, I think when we have sort of um, absolute value notation, you've generally got context in the algebra that makes it clear what you're doing, right? But that's kind of why I steer away from this notation. Um, for what it's worth, this exact symbol comes up in another form which I also do not tend to use and that's with definite integrals right so I know several of you like this notation because I see you use it all the time sometimes people will say oh if I'm integrating uh, from 1 to 3 2x dx right um, the standard form of notation that we use for a definite integral is to use these big square brackets right and we say integrate that from one to three. I know a lot of you, even in the most recent assessment task, um, have kind of ditched that notation and used this one, right? It's the same kind of, you know, <laughs> the mathematicians are so lazy with like, let's use, like, what's the simplest symbol we can have? It's just a line, it's just a longer one, right? Um, and, and this, I, I will agree, like if I see this, I do know what it means because I've seen lots of notation. I still don't like it. I never use it, especially because when you sort of say in a recurrence relation or even when you're doing just integration by parts once and you've got a definite integral appearing and then there's like some other, you know, there's like a minus integral of VDU off on the end here. Um, I just think it just, it, it opens up so much ambiguity and you're kind of like, oh, where is the rest of, like, where does this definite integral end? Um, I'm not a, I'm not a fan, okay? So, uh, so that's that's what I would say in terms of using that notation. Uh, can you use it? Yes, but I I don't use it, and that's for the reasons that I just stated. Mrs. Lee, do you have a question or a point to raise? Not a question. I'm just intrigued by Pahan's question and thought you might like a second to read it. Oh, of course. Okay. So, oh, I thought I'd stick my nose in, give you that second to read it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so, um, Pahan's question is, couldn't we just factorize k cubed plus one into, um, and you've got there a sum of cubes result, okay? Um, so, if I go ahead and take this result over here, k cubed plus one. By the way, thank you, Pahan, for pointing that out. Um, we can use a sum of cubes result. So, it is uh, same opposite always positive before this was a result that you got given to you. Um, this is something we had to memorize. So can you use this? Okay, so if k cubed, if k plus one is a multiple of three, because that's what, that's our uh, antecedent condition, um, then this is k cubed plus one. So that's also going to be divisible by three because it has the k plus one in it. Yeah, to totally fine with me. Um, I do like that as a result because you can avoid all of this sort of algebra that I've just done through here. So Thumbs up from me. Um, I didn't do it because I didn't think of it. So thank you. I did ask for other people to give me uh, other methods, but yeah, I have no issue with it. The logic seems fine to me. 